Welcome back, guys, to another week. As always, I hope you've had a great week. Uh, it's been a really good week for me. Uh, as always, it's been busy uh, with work, but uh, it's always been it's been good. So I hope that uh, I know probably another this maybe your first full week in the books of school. I know we kind of started maybe the uh, last week, but uh, maybe only a day or two there. So first full week. Hopefully that is uh, treating you well. I know some of you are probably pretty excited to be back to school, something different, something new, get to see your friends, maybe that you haven't seen uh, since the, the spring. And uh, some of you may be like, ugh, school, I hate school, I don't wanna go back to school uh, and be bummed out about it. Either way, I hope that it's been a good week. Uh, even if you don't like it, hopefully you found something to enjoy about it. Um, so, we started a new thing last week. We uh, I'm going to continue it again this week. We are going to have a secret word that I'm going to say at some point in the video. So be listening for that. Um, last week, forgot to put it on the screen like um, so that you could see it. I did put it in the comments, so hopefully some of you found it. Oh, I know some of you found it. Um, but hopefully more of you will find it uh, this week. I will have it on the screen this week, but my email is eugene.robert.sandberg uh, at gmail.com be on the screen. And uh, when you hear the word, text me uh, if you have my number or send me an email with the word and your name so that I know who it is. And that will enter, enter you into the drawing for this week uh, for uh, the gift card. So without further ado, the winner from last week was Jojo Collins. So Jojo, I'll be getting with you uh, at some point in the next couple of days to get you your prize. So I hope the rest of you will jump in and engage with that. Also, uh, we're going to um, have Zoom this week. I'm going to try something a little different. So too early in the day was tough for people because they were doing lunch. And then uh, right in the middle of the day, I feel like was tough. Uh, people kind of were doing things on Sunday afternoon. And uh, so some people could make it, some people couldn't make it. So we're going to just try a different time. We're going to try after dinner on Sunday. We're going to try at 7 p.m. Uh, try to get everybody together. So if you're interested in kind of having uh, a good social time with everybody, play some games. Uh, for those of you who are new, um, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, or even seventh graders, y'all are all welcome to join. We'll have a good time. Uh, 7 p.m. Uh, on Zoom. If you don't have that, again, just simply email me or text me and I can shoot you the Zoom uh, link so that you can get that access. Um, for the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, you should have already heard from me, probably on the phone, uh, letting you know, you know that this is going on. And so I should have hopefully given you what you need then as well. But if for whatever reason I couldn't get in touch with you, um, just know that you can email me and I'll get you everything that you need to know. Okay, so let's jump in. So last week we studied uh, the first sin. We, we went creation two weeks ago. Last week we started about the first sin. We got introduced to the villain of the story. We got to see the serpent, uh, the devil, Satan, all of uh, that kind of bundled up in one. And we talked about how uh, God gave us a choice. He did not have to do that. We talked about kind of why it was important that we had a choice. Um, and then <clears throat> we learned that, you know, God is there to forgive us when we fall short. He's there to have a relationship with us. But... Forgiveness doesn't mean that we don't have to deal with consequences. Just like Adam and Eve had to deal with the consequences of their choices, so often do we with our choices. And so today we're going to continue a little bit, still in Genesis. We're going to way fast forward in the story, but uh, we're going to be continuing to talk about choices a little bit. Um, one in particular that a new character made. So I'm gonna go through, uh, I know you probably don't super enjoy reading the sections of the Bible, if you even have, where they talk about genealogies. It's basically, this person had this many sons, and this person had this many sons, and they lived for this many years, and it goes through. But one thing that it does do, which is really neat, is helps us to kind of uh, see the passage of time in the uh, Bible. It helps us to see kind of how people are related, how things are going on. So I'm gonna, in a lightning fashion, take you from Adam and Eve, which is where we left off, to Abraham, which is where we're going to pick up today in Genesis chapter 13. So, Adam and Eve have kids, who have kids, who have kids. Adam has Seth, Seth has Enosh, Enosh has Kenan, Kenan has Mahalalel, uh, who has Jared, who has Enoch, who has Methuselah, 
Fun side note, Methuselah lived for 969 years, the oldest person to ever live on record. Just a fun little uh, trivia fact there for you. Methuselah had Lamech. Lamech had Noah. You should know and recognize that name, Noah, uh, with the flood. That's not the story we're going to focus on today. We will come back to that at some point in the year, I'm sure. But uh, Noah was the, the guy with the flood, had the boat, all the animals, right? Noah had Shem. Shem had Arphaxid. I don't know, weird names, uh, who had uh, Selah, who had Eber, who had Peleg, who had Reu, who had Serug, who had Nahor, who had Terah, who had Abram, or Abraham, depending upon where in uh, the Abraham's story you are in. Today, we're going to be in the part where he is Abram. Um, also, the other character in our story, so we said that Terah had Abram, Terah also had Haran, and Haran had Lot. So the two characters in our story today, Abram and Lot, if you didn't catch the connection there, uh, Lot is uh, Abram's uh, nephew. So that is where we are at. Okay. So uh, before we hop straight into Genesis 13, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a disagreement that Abraham and Lot had. And we're going to look at the choices that, we ha that they had and the choices that we have a little bit as well. And specifically in this, uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the idea of being selfish or selfless. Uh, what does that mean? What does being selfish or being selfless mean? Those are two common words. I'm sure you both have, or I'm sure you've heard both of them. Uh, I'm sure you've been called selfish at some point. I know I have. Uh, and maybe you've been called selfless at some point. I don't know. Um, people don't typically run around and call people selfless, but it does happen. Um, so let's, let's take a moment and just think about some of the choices that we make. Uh, and think about it in the context of being selfless, being selfish. Um, so you're walking down the street and uh, you see someone who uh, drops their wallet. They don't notice it, they keep walking. What do you do? You look down, you pick up the wallet, you, you, maybe you open it up, you look, there's a bunch of money in it, uh, maybe a lot more money than you even have. What do you do? Do you yell at them? Say, hey, hey, man, hey, hey, you dropped your wallet. Or do you just keep, take out the money, drop the wallet, maybe he'll come back and find it, that's on him. Do you uh, just keep the whole thing? Uh, you don't want him to find out that, uh, that you have it. Uh, what do you do? Um, what about if you get, this is interesting, have you ever gotten two identical presents at maybe your birthday, Christmas, whenever, have you ever gotten two of the same thing? Or maybe you just got something you already had. What do you do? Do you complain? Ah, oh, I already have this. Lame. Do you ask to take it back? Do you maybe just find somebody else who might enjoy it and give it to them? What do you do? Uh, there's a lot of options there. You see a kid sitting by themselves at lunch. Do you go sit with them? Do you be like, I don't know who that is. I don't, I'm going to do my own thing. I've got my, my friends that I want to go hang out with. Why would I want to go sit with this random person? They, in fact, maybe you even recognize them and you're like, they're not very cool. And you don't, yeah, do I want to go sit with them? Oh, not, not really. I'd rather go do what I want to do. Um, do you do it anyway? Choice, right? Again, more. Um, you have time to play. There's maybe a couple hours before it's bedtime or something. Um, but your brother or sister still has chores to do. What do you do? Ha! I'm going to go have a good time. You do your chores. Sucks for you. Is that, is that how you respond? Or do you say, um, hey, why don't I help you with those chores? Let's just knock them out real quick so that we can both go off and play together an option. How many of you helped your brothers and sisters with your chores without being asked? Any of you? I bet probably not, right? You're like, that's their choice. Why would I do that? Right? Because you're focused on you. Again, self, think selfless or selfish. Selfless means that you're, you're not thinking about yourself at all. You're focused completely on someone else. Selfish means you're focused on yourself. Pretty much every choice or a lot of choices in life, we have a choice to be selfish, selfless, or maybe somewhere in between. Maybe I'll kind of help. 
maybe I'll, I'll look out for them a little bit, but I'm also going to look out for me. Um, someone drops what they're carrying. They're carrying this big load of stuff, maybe a bunch of books or a bunch of... Uh, Carrying this big box full of stuff, drops, spills everywhere. Do you stop? Do you help them? Do you pick it up? Do you, you know, help them carry it? Then you do offer, hey, where are you going? Can I help you carry this box? Or do you be like, that's not my box. I'm not helping. I'm doing my own thing, right? It takes your time, energy, effort. There's so many more, so many different um, things. So let's think about this. It's maybe the last one. Um, it's recess. You're going to play a, a game, baseball kickball, dodgeball, I don't know, um, some sort of outdoor sporting activity, and you get selected as the team captain, and you get the opportunity to choose first. What do you do? Do you pick the best player? Do you want to win, right? Do you look at who's the fastest, who's the best at kicking, throwing, whatever, whatever the sport is? Do you say, no, nah, man, hey, you can pick first. Let the other team captain pick. Even though it was your turn to pick first, you let them go first. Is that, do you make that choice? Do you Pick your friend, even though he's not as good at the sport. Or maybe pick somebody who you know always gets picked last to make him feel better, make him not have to get picked last again. Uh, so many different choices here. And again, uh, is it, are you focused on what's best for you, what's best for your, your situation, or are you thinking about others? So we're going to talk today about uh, Abraham and Lot and uh, they're given a similar choice. They're given an opportunity to be selfish and selfless, and one of them decides to be selfish, one of them decides to be selfless. And we're going to kind of examine that and, and th what that really means for us. So uh, let's dive in. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 13. We're basically going to read the whole uh, thing today, but we're going to just read the first couple of verses, um, or first seven verses, uh, to start. So it says, Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev, he, his wife, and all he had, and Lot with him. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver and gold. He went by stages from the Negev to Bethel, to the places before Bethel and Ai, where his tent had formerly been, to the site where he had built the altar. And Abram called on the name of the Lord there. Now Lot, who was traveling with Abram, also had flocks, herds, and tents. But the land was unable to support them as long as they had stayed together. For they had so many possessions that they could not stay together. And there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At the time, the Canaanites and Perzites were living in the land. Okay, so... They're traveling together. First off, they start off in Egypt. There was a famine in Egypt. They had to leave uh, to go find food somewhere else. So they're like, hey, let's go back to a place that we've previously been that maybe had worked out for us in the past. So Abram packs up all of his stuff, his animals, livestock, family members, uh, everyone traveling with him and his tents and all that stuff. It's like, all right, let's go. And he brings Lot, his nephew, with him. And Lot had all of his stuff, his tents, family members, whatever, all, all that stuff. So Lot and Abram are traveling together. Um, and then they get back to kind of this place that they had been previously. Um, and it says that basically an argument breaks out. That's what a, what a quarrel means. I don't uh, know how many of you use that term, but that's what a quarrel means is basically a fight. They kind of start like, you know, no, I'm going to use this section of land. Well, no, I'm going to use this. Well, you guys got all your sheep, and now I won't have room. And I don't, we don't know exactly what the argument looked like, but they're basically uh, got all this stuff, all these people, all these sheep and cows and, and all this stuff, and there's just not enough room. Um, so let's keep going. So Abram says to Lot, please, let's not have quarreling between you and me or between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, since we are relatives. Isn't the whole land before you? Separate from me. If you go to the left, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked out and saw that the entire plain of the Jordan, as far as Zor, was well watered, everywhere like the Lord's garden and the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose the entire plain of the Jordan for himself. Then Lot journeyed eastward, and they separated from each other. 
Abram lived in the land of Canaan, but Lot lived in the cities on the plain and set up his tent near Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were evil, sitting, sinning immensely against the Lord. Okay, so they're in an argument, and Abram comes up and is like, all right, guys, look, let's not fight. We're family. Let's not, you know, let's not quarrel or fight about these, the, the, you know, this problem. Let's just split up. We got too much to be here together. There's, there's not enough space if we stay here, so let's. And he gives Lot the choice. Now, Abram here is the older guy. He's the more senior person in this kind of family hierarchy, right? Uh, it's his nephew. And Abram steps in and says, I'm going to give you the choice. You go to the left, I'll go to the right. You go to the right, I'll go to the left. You pick what you want. It's like being um, you know, able to choose the, the first player in a baseball game, and instead of choosing, he just simply says, no, you, you pick first, and I'll just take whatever is left. Right? So Abram, ha- uh, Abram here is being a little bit selfless. He's given Lot the, uh, the, the first choice. Now, what does Lot do? So Lot looks around and tries to say what is best. He does what me and you would do most of the time. Oftentimes, our default thought process is to think about what's best for me. What do I want? If, if, if your brother or sister came up and your mom said, hey, I've got this giant cookie, y'all can split it. And your brother takes it, breaks it in half, and holds out the two cookies and says, which side do you want? Which one are you taking? The bigger side, right? Without fail. Nobody volunteers to take the littler side of the cookie, especially if it's noticeably smaller, right? We tend to just think, what do I want? What's best for me? That's what Lot does here. Lot says, okay, I'm going to look around. There's the Jordan River. There's all of this watered area here. I want this good land that's going to be good for, for, for my livestock, maybe good for, for uh, farming or planting or whatever. Uh, I want this land that looks really, really lush and, 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 and vibrant and full of life. Um, that's the land that I want. Now, it calls out something, and this is kind of uh, peering into the, the problems that they're going to have. It says um, that he set up his camp near Sodom. Now, if you've studied um, the Bible, you'll know if you, anything that's going around Sodom or Gomorrah, it's not good. We know the story of what happens in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to happen here later on uh, in the book, and it's not good. And it specifically even calls it out. The men of Sodom were evil, sitting immensely. Not like just kind of, like this was bad. Now, Lot, not only did he not pay attention to the fact that he was going to choose the land near these evil people, but he even set up his tents near them. He didn't even say like, well, I'll take the land near them, but maybe I'll just pitch myself way over here and leave them over there on the far side. No, it says he takes the land that he thought was best. I don't even care that Sodom and Gomorrah is there. And and furthermore, I'm going to kind of pitch my tents kind of close to them. Okay, so um, if we keep reading through this, we'll find out that being selfish cost him here. And not only that, but there's even another lesson for associating with the wrong crowd. Have y'all ever been in a situation where uh, maybe the people that were around you were making some bad choices um, and you got kind of hung around them for a little too long, and maybe you got kind of blamed for what they were doing. They kind of lumped you in with that group and said, oh, yeah, he was, he was with them, and they were doing this bad thing. So, uh, Or maybe you actually got drawn into it, and you all ended up doing that, and you actually got in trouble because you found yourself doing something that you knew you shouldn't have been doing uh, just because you were hanging around the wrong guys. And if it hasn't happened to you yet as a fourth, fifth, or sixth grader, I guarantee you it will. If you surround yourself with people that are making bad choices, you're going to find yourself making bad choices. You're going to find yourself um, getting, becoming who you're around. And so um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end, but it's really, really important 
um, the relationships that we choose in life and, and, and what we choose to associate with and who we choose to be around. Um, but that's kind of a side lesson here um, as well. So let's, let's keep going and then we'll kind of wrap up. So a couple more verses left in Genesis 13. We're going to start in verse 14 here. It says, After Lot had separated from him, the Lord said to Abram, Look from the place where you are. Look north, south, east, west, for I will give you and your offspring forever all the land that you see. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust of the earth, then your offspring could be counted. Get up and walk around the land, though its length and width, for I will give it to you, through its length and width, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and went to live near the oaks of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. So Abram gave Lot the choice. He was selfless in this situation. And probably not simply because of this one choice, but because of a lifestyle of choices that Abram makes, God makes a covenant with Abraham. And this is a really, really interesting thing. So he says that not only will I give you all of the land that you see, east, west, north, south. It, it kind of reminds me of um, The Lion King. I don't know the last time y'all saw The Lion King. I watched it uh, like the, the live a, uh, action Lion King that came out recently. And you know how um, uh, Mufasa brings Simba when he's a, a little lion cub up to the edge and he's like, you know, everything the light touches will be yours. You know, I don't, for some reason, like when I read this passage, that's like the, the vision that I get here of Abraham, like looking out like little Simba, like, wow, all of this will be mine. Um, and, and then you even got like, uh, that dark area over by Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, leave that one alone. Like, like, uh, like Sodom. now the God didn't say that, but, uh, like in my mind, that's actually kind of what happened here, right? Lot went over with the dark area with the hyenas and all that. And, and he paid a price for it. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> enough of the Lion King. Uh, that's just my, my crazy brain working. But, uh, so God makes a, a covenant with him. And then this, this just kind of blows my mind. Have you ever had to dust your house? Like, has your mom ever given you, you know, a little a Swiffer duster or maybe um, back when I was your age, we had to, we took like actual like a spray and we sprayed it on a cloth and we, you know, used the cloth and dusted every little ob object and then put the object back and then dusted the, you know, the counters and the shelves and like every little object all over the house, getting all the dust off. Can you imagine if your mother said, while you're dusting, count how many pieces of dust there are on each object. I just want to know how many pieces of, of dust were there on the eagle little statue? How many of them were on this little candle over here? What about the remote control? What about the, the, the sound speaker over by the TV, the, on the surface of the TV cabinet? I don't know, whatever the things you have in your house are. Just, I, just give me a ballpark. How many pieces of dust are there on each object in the living room? Would you even begin to know how to do that? Would you be able to go to the eagle and like look finally at all the little pieces of dust and begin to try to count them? I mean, even counting dust on one item feels like an impossible task to me. I mean, dust is so small and it's just... I don't even, like, dust seems to just appear everywhere. It's like you dust it off, and two days later, you look back, and somehow there's dust on it again. You're like, what happened? I just cleaned that, right? Um, but imagine, it, it says here, so that anyone could count the dust of the earth, not of the, the, the eagle or the, the, the item in your living room, the entire earth, count the dust of the earth. That is... I mean, if that's not an impossible task, I don't know what it is, right? It would be an impossible task to just count the dust in my house, more or less, of the entire earth. And so he's trying to, to paint a picture here for Abram, basically saying, you're going to have a crazy amount of descendants, just an uncountable amount of descendants. Um, and we're going, God is going to bless you and your house. I'm going to give you all of the land, and you're going to have crazy amount. Of, of children and descendants and their children and their children. I mean, you thought I went through a long list of descendants just to go from Adam to Abram. Imagine me having to spell out the entire tree 
uh, family tree of Abraham. I mean, we, I would never finish. It, literally, it says it's impossible to count, right? Um, so God rewards Abraham here. Um, now, he could have chosen, I'm the older, more senior person in the household. I'm taking what I want. I'm going to do whatever I want to do, but he didn't. <clears throat> he trusted in God. He, he simply said, I want to do what's best for our family. I recognize this is my, my nephew, and that relationship is important to me. The, uh, my family is important to me, and it's more important to me than whether I get the prettier piece of land. It's more important to me whether I get, than whether I get the streams flowing and the lush gardens and, and the ample amounts of food or whatever you know, Lot saw when he was looking down. Uh, he's like, relationship matters more to me than, than that. Um, and so I want to I wanna talk for a second about relationships and the idea of what matters, what has lasting value, and what, uh, what doesn't. And so I brought with me, so uh, full disclosure here, I, I went to go get some, uh, this is a bubble wand, I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, I went to go get some bubbles, in fact I'm going to move this out of the way just in case uh, this spills a little bit. Uh, I went to go get a, a, uh, some bubbles, and I could not, for the life of me, find the little bubble containers with the little blow things that blow the little bubbles out. Um, apparently, the, all they want to do is sell you gigantic bubbles. They just want to sell you these, these huge... Um, I'm going to let this sit here for a second, because I don't really want to drop uh, this all over the place. Okay, let's see if I can make this, uh, make this work. So getting some bubbles here. I wish I had, uh, I was at this, um, this wedding. I don't know if y'all have been to a wedding before, but they had a, um, you know how they, they do bubbles for, let's try this one more time. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, so at weddings, they do, they do bubbles for like when the bride and groom are running out. This guy had like this gun that when he held down the trigger, it just like poured hundreds and hundreds of bubbles out all over the place. And it was like a machine gun, just and he was just spraying bubbles everywhere. It was awesome. Uh, I wish I had that to show you. But as you can see here, um, I don't know if you've played with bubbles before, but bubbles are very beautiful. They're very interesting. If you were to ever kind of examine a bubble, um, they're very, very cool looking and I enjoy just kind of running around and playing with bubbles and blowing bubbles. And it's just kind of interesting uh, if you ever had a dog like running and chasing them. But what can you say about a bubble? It's beautiful, but it's temporary, right? Have you ever tried to keep a bubble and make it last? Have you ever tried to hold it on your finger and allow it to just sit there? How long have you gotten it to last? Maybe a couple seconds? Bubbles are a temporary joy. There's something that you get to see in the moment, and you're like, wow, cool, maybe chase one around. But it's not something that's ever going to last. Guys, in life, we will have the opportunity to have our bubbles. We'll have opportunities to make choices, to get things that look pretty, that are fun, that uh, you know, are interesting to, to, to mess around with and play around with, but have no real lasting value. And we'll have opportunities to make choices where we have, uh, make impact upon relationships that last for years and years and years and really for the lifetime of that person and honestly could carry on from generation to generation. Now, Abraham had a lasting relationship with God and God chose to reward him and says, I, you, your uh, relationship with God and, and the covenant I'm making with you is going to last for generations to come, so much so that they won't even be able to count it. That's the lasting impact that Abraham had on the world. Now, we're probably not going to have the same kind of impact as Abraham, but we do get choices every single day to choose between what's best for me in the moment, what's good uh, and pretty and fun and interesting and what is going to have value. And guys, if you know me, um, you know that relationships are the most important thing to me. And I think personally, I'm biased maybe, but I think relationships should be the most important thing to all of you as well. Um, first and foremost, your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the most important relationship you'll ever have. 
Um, it's the one that God is calling to you to have throughout all of Scripture um, and that you can have if you simply trust in him. But beyond that, then the relationships that you have with your family, Abraham prioritized his family here. He said, Lot is family. I care about him. I'm going to do what's best for Lot. I'm going to do what's best for my family and for his family. And I'm going to make the choice that sacrifices maybe the fun short-term pretty cool thing, and I'm going to do what's best for this relationship and for our family. Your relationships with your friends, your coworkers, your classmates, uh, your neighbors, uh, I mean, just any group of, of people that you end up kind of um, being with and engaging with for any period of time, your Sunday school class, your teachers, um, those relationships, if you invest in those, if you make the choice to not be selfish and be selfless and put them first, you will have lasting value on their life. If you think back in your life about what has mattered most to you, in some cases you might have been, oh, I got this brand new bike, or maybe when I got an Xbox or something, but I bet you, if you really think hard, the things that matter most, the things that have impacted you the most, is someone who did something for you, who said something to you, who maybe gave you that Xbox or that bike that really had an impact on you. They showed love or kindness or, 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 or any of the, of, of the different things that God, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I mean, all of those different things can really have an impact on our life. And I know if I look back at my life, that's what I see. I see people who have d made a difference in my life. They've made choices that have helped me along the way, who've guided me, who've uh, put me first. And those are the, the people and the moments and the memories that I cherish the most. And, and guys, that's, that's what Abraham put forth first here. And that's what you should put for first in your life. Don't be selfish. Don't focus on the short term. Don't focus on the little, the bubbles of life that just float by and disappear like that. Focus on the relationships that you have in life. That is what will last. That is what will have lasting value. So um, we're going to wrap that up here today. Um, remember, we got Zoom on Sunday at 7 p.m., if you do not have it, um, if you don't have the link, email me, text me if you have it, um, and get with me. I'll make sure you have it. Hopefully, you already have it, um, and we'll see you at 7 o'clock. Otherwise, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this story about Abraham and Lot so that we can learn about the value uh, of being selfless, about the value of putting others first, about the value of relationships relationships with you, relationships with our family and those around us, Lord. Please help us to focus on things that have lasting value, things that are not temporary and just fade quickly over time, Lord. Help us to, um, to care about the people around us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, uh, glad y'all listened in. Uh, glad you're still here, and we'll see you uh, next week. Have a great one. Oh, by the way, the secret word is bubble. Have a good one.